How would you feel if you found out there was a parasite that could control your mind and even make you question your sex? Well, fortunately for you, this hypothetical doesn't really apply. However, if you were a crab, you might have to worry about a parasite from the genus Saculina that is known to castrate and feminize crabs. You see, unlike most barnacles that cling harmlessly to rocks, boats, or even whales, barnacles from the genus Saculina will penetrate through a crab's arm joint and proceed to grow root-like tendrils deep inside the crab's body. Now these root-like tendrils do a few things. First, they wrap around the organs, primarily the gut and the blood vessels of the crab, where they will start to suck the nutrients from its new host. As the infection spreads, these tendrils will then start to degrade or eat the gonads of the crab, which in turn castrates them, similar to that eunuch from Game of Thrones. However, unlike Lord Varys, these parasitized crabs aren't in control of the situation. This is because the parasite doesn't just steal the nutrients of the crab, but it also starts to influence the crab's mind and behavior. It essentially tricks the crab into acting like the parasite's mother. Let me explain. The parasite starts to develop a brood sac on the outside of the crab. Now the location of this brood sac is in the same location that a female crab would normally produce her eggs. And like the eggs of the crab, she will start to groom and take care of this parasitic barnacle. Now the reason the crab does this is believed to be a result of the parasite releasing hormones from the tendrils that are now wrapped around the nerves of the crab. This causes the crab to treat the parasitic brood mass as its own offspring rather than some parasitic infection. Now, the parasite doesn't only infect female crabs, so what happens when a male crab gets infected by the barnacle? Well, simply put, it feminizes the male crabs, and it does this by broadening the abdomen of the crab and reducing the size of their claws. These male crabs will then go on to act like female crabs and will start to nurture their new parasitic brood sac in the same way a female crab would tend to her eggs. Well, now I'm sure you're wondering how do these crabs even get infected? Well, it's really quite simple. From the brood sac, tiny parasitic larvae are released into the water. Now these parasites will drift around in the water looking for a new crab to infect. Depending on the environmental conditions, like temperature and salinity, they can survive days or even weeks before encountering a crab. When one of these larvae encounter a crab, the larvae will start to crawl along the crab's shell, and what it's doing is it's looking for an arm joint or a leg joint to penetrate into the crab. Once inside the crab, the parasite will ride the blood currents of the crab until it finds the gut where it will start to grow. Now, the actual brood sac can take about 3-8 to eight weeks for the parasite to emerge, depending on the species and the environmental cues. Now, does a crab being infected with a barnacle mean it's game over for the crab and that they're pretty much doomed to this existence? Well, most often yes, but not always. You see, when a crab is infected, they lose their ability to molt. This in practice prevents the crab from growing any larger, which for a crab also typically makes them a lot safer. More importantly, if the crab can't molt, they can't regrow any of its limbs, so this also makes the crab extremely vulnerable. If they lose one or both claws, they are left completely defenseless. On top of that, this parasite has also been shown to reduce the crab's ability to bury itself. Now, if you're a crab, there are a lot of hungry animals looking to munch on you, from octopi to larger fish, so being able to bury yourself in the sand is a great way to stay hidden. However, when a crab buries itself into sand, it also removes things that are attached to its carapace, such as algae, barnacles, and many other things that can grow on it. So here again, the parasite exerts some of its manipulation skills, and infected crabs have been shown to bury themselves about half as often as non-infected crabs. But what if I were to remove a barnacle from a crab? Would this save it? Well, yes, but there would be some lasting damage. Research shows that removing a barnacle can allow crabs to recover, occasionally even regrow their gonads. However, for male crabs, there can be some lingering effects, as these formerly male crabs often grow back partial ovaries instead of testes, so the chemical cues from the parasite seem to cause some permanent changes among male crabs. Well, if you're anything like me, as soon as I learned about this parasite, I instantly wanted to find some. So, where can these parasites be located? Well, there are over 100 species in this genus, and they are found in most regions of the world. However, in North America and Europe, the most common species is Saculina carcini, which is primarily found attached to green crabs all along the coasts where you can expect between 2 and 50% of crabs to be infected with this parasite. Though, I have talked to some friends that say they have found regions of greater than 90% prevalence. Well, when I find one of these parasites, are they actually safe to touch for people? And the answer is, yes, of course they are. You're not a crab, so you're at no risk of being infected by this parasite. They're completely benign to people. The only risk you have is if the crab were to pinch you, and that could hurt a little bit. But the parasite itself is completely harmless. Because I'm not a crab, I find this parasite endlessly interesting. But what do you all think about it? Is it cool, gross, scary, or something else? Let me know what you think about it in the comments. Also, while you're in the comments, you can find the links to the papers I used while researching this topic. And also make sure to like and subscribe so that you can see the upcoming videos where I talk about more parasite-related stuff and start talking about some of the common myths and some of the common scams surrounding this field.